Backman take pride in producing their sound locomotives to be as near to the real thing as possible. In partnership with Steve Weeks of Southwest Digital, digital recordings of real locomotives are made, even down to small changes within the sound of how a locomotive operates when under load or running light. In these pictures, we show you the detail we go to in recording, capturing the sounds such as whistles, cylinder drain cocks, water injector, sanding gear, and the safety valves lifting. These sounds, with that of the main locomotive, are then put together in the sound studio using the latest technology available before loading onto the digital sound decoder. Okay, we showed you how the sounds are recorded in real life. So let's show you now how to get the best of the sound using the function buttons on Dynamis to control, like Tony and I have been doing throughout the video. We press the menu button and we scroll across to the edit function mode and press accept. In this point, if you look at your instructions with each sound locomotive, it will tell you to set either the function buttons to latched or unlatched. You'll notice by pressing F2, the F2 goes out and that means it's on an unlatched position. So every time I press that button, it will trigger the whistle. F3, again, going to go short, trigger. So that's what latching and unlatching does on the functionality. So let's drive the locomotive off now. One notch on the accelerator. We'll wait for the whistle to go. Press the drain cocks. Whistle. Drain cocks off. There you are, we're using the functions of Dynamis to get the best from your digital sound locomotives. Fitting the decoder, the heart of the system in the locomotive. And Tony, you're going to be showing me how. Yes, I am. And uh, what we're going to do, Tony, is we're going to fit three decoders today. We're going to start off with the 21 pin decoder, then we're going to go into the 8 pin decoder, and then we'll fit the 6 pin decoder, and we'll fit the 6 pin decoder to one of the N gauge locomotives. Mm -hmm. Because this sometimes causes problems. People are alarmed at taking things apart. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But, but this uh, is really dead easy. It's dead easy. And I would also say that if a customer gets into a, a mess and is worried about doing this, uh, we also have dealers, or uh, Backman retailers out there, they do offer decoder fitting services. And all that information can be found on the website. That's well. worth so, knowing. Uh, yeah. So if they, there's nothing to fear about it. If in doubt, always ask is okay. the best thing. OK, my friend. OK. Up to you. So, Tony, let's uh, fit a 21-pin decoder. What we have there is the 21-pin decoder. And that's a standard Dynamis product? It is, yes. It's a standard uh, Backman product, the 21-pin yes. decoder. And what we have here is the G2 with uh, the blanking plate fitted. So to stall it securely. So we've taken the lid off, the tender top, that's just a couple of screws, couple of screws that's yeah. dead easy. And gently just lift the decoder blanking plate up. Yes. Some people do try to fit them with the blanking plate fitted, and obviously you do need to remove that. Mm -hmm. uh, then you take the decoder, like so, and you'll notice that there is uh, 11 contacts and then 10 contacts, so the 21, 21 pin. pin. And we just line that up over the decoder slot, and it just and push, pushes in. And that's the decoder fitted yeah. to a G2. And then we leave the tender top off until we've tested this. Exactly, yes. yes right. Exactly. OK. OK, Tony, uh, we've just done a little steam locomotive there, or a large steam locomotive with a 21 pin. We'll do a diesel locomotive. A um, little bit more intricacy, because when you take a diesel locomotive, they do have lights on them. Yes. So uh, a little bit more care is required. Again, remove the screws from underneath the body. Four screws. Four screws. Mm -hmm. And then when you lift the body off, always be careful because you can have a lighting cable running yes. down there. As so well. be very gentle and sort of. Very gentle and put it on that. one side. Yeah. Like that. Like so, yes, yes. I mean, they are taped in, I can see yes, that. But, right. yeah. you know, don't just sort of 
drag the whole thing off quickly. Okay. Again, hold the locomotive and remove the decoder blanking plug, plug, like so. And this time we put our 21 pin onto the body again and put it home. There we go. And obviously we put the we. We'd have to just rest the body back yes, on there. Yes, before we test it. Uh, but don't screw it down, uh, and then we can test that one. Just as easy. Just as easy, yes, exactly. Okay, Tony, let's have a look at an 8-pin decoder fitting. Uh, we've got the chassis of a little tank engine there, and I've removed the, the blanking plug which sits along the contact strip there. Um, do you fancy having a go? Yes. Okay. So this is an 8-pin de decoder. 8-pin decoder, yes. And I assume that this is an older model because we've got wires on this, the others have no wires at all. It's exactly the same decoder as the 554 as the product is, but because uh, some of the older locomotives and the steam locomotives use the 8-pin socket on a lot of the smaller locomotives, we've got the wiring loom with the 8-pin plug. Right. So it's exactly the same functions, exactly the same features as the 554. We must take a little care and make sure we don't pinch this wire. Exactly. So that just goes yeah. in and then just finger pressure. Yes. Got that. That's it. And then presumably this just rests on the top and fits in the cab of this 062. That's right, yes. You'd fit it in the cab. It's uh, got a bit more space or some people attach it to the roof of the cab or, yes. or position it in there. But obviously don't pull on these wires. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So Tony, let's do the fourth locomotive where we're going to fit a decoder to, and that's a Graham Farish N-gauge locomotive, uh, introducing of course our brand new little N-gauge decoder, and two of the little products which just briefly touch on are the wiring harnesses, which will allow this N-gauge decoder to be attached to an 8-pin locomotive socket, or in some cases even to a locomotive without any decoder socket. Right. Okay. I can see a use here for kipped or scratch built locomotives. Yes, definitely. So these are available as separate items. As separate items, yeah. yeah Fine. So. Um, okay, Tony, are you so, going to have a go with yes, this Yes, I'll have yeah. another go. So this is the six pin one. Yeah, that's you the just, blanking plug. You just pull it carefully. Now that little... The silver dot is pin Silver one. dot is yes, pin yeah. one, which corresponds to that. It does, yes, yeah. Get it in position, assuming I can see. And that's it. A doddle. It's ready for testing. CV programming, um, the part of DCC which often worries customers of how they program CVs. A CV stands for a configuration variable. In simple terms, it's like the volume control on your TV. The further across you go to near enough 60 on the dial, the louder the TV will be. The lower down the number, the quieter the TV will be. And that's what a CV is. It's a control of controlling the electronics within the decoder. I'll explain it in simple terms in the next few minutes to you. The first thing you need to do when you're setting up CVs before you do any CV programming is set yourself up with a service or programming track. Now as I explained and I explained to Tony earlier, using the Dynamics Pro system you can actually use the service track and have that integrated anywhere on your layout. Okay so let's program a CV. We press the menu button and we scroll through to where it says Program Locomotive 3. We accept that and then we scroll through to where it says Program on Service Track. Press the tick which is the Accept button and this time we press CV3 with a value of 50. So that's changing the acceleration of the locomotive. We press Program. We then do that for the deceleration CV, which is CV4, and also for the maximum speed CV, which is CV5. Then exit out, and then accelerate. You'll notice the locomotive 
pulls away nice and slowly. If you actually get in a mess with your programming of CVs and get yourself confused, it's very simple to do a decoder reset. What you do, again, is press the menu button, you scroll through to the program locomotive 3, press the tick, which is accept, scroll through again to the program on service track, press the accept button, and then type in the decoder reset, which is CV value 8, and press program. That now sets the locomotive back to the settings as it was when it left the factory. Now notice it runs quickly. You've shown me how to reconfigure the locomotives. Yes. How to drive the locomotives, double heading, yes. banking. But this system also allows you to operate points, signals, turnouts, turntable if necessary. If he wants to, yes, yes. In fact, you can actually operate up to 100 accessories of your choice. It's very simple to do. You enter into out of locomotive mode to accessory mode. Uh, you type in the accessory you want it to be, 1 to 100, and then literally by pressing the middle buttons, that fires the point. Then come out of the accessory mode, and then we can drive the locomotive onto the main track. Using just the one control? Using just the one control. And you don't have to be by a control panel? Nope, not at all. It gives you the freedom to move around anywhere.